100 level listening and speaking classes. It's part of the academic support ESL programs. The students are taking reading and writing classes the same time that they're taking my listening and speaking class. It's a four hour a week class. And uh, there are two levels of it. So there's one level in the fall, one in the spring. And I have a theme that I've done the last couple of years for the um, fall class where we look at consumerism. Uh, lately, we've been looking quite a bit into di the digital environment that the students live in. And then we move into the natural world and then the effects of our consumerism and our way of life on the natural world. And then in the second, um, the spring semester, we talk about food and food production and the effects of food production. Sometimes I think my classes are terribly depressing for my students. <laughs> and some, but, you know, it's reality. So. Um, I do encourage them, I talk about biomimicry, and a lot of them are going into management, so I encourage them to try to like, say, yeah, you guys can be the solution. So you know? if you come to Gen Ed, maybe. Yeah. Biomimicry. Oh, great. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be great. So um, I use two things that I'll talk about. I use a wiki, and I use something called voice thread. The wiki I use predominantly for um, giving them listening practice. So I'll show you, this is my fall this semester's wiki, uh, and I use, you know, I use technology with this class for several reasons. One, it's more convenient for me. I mean, I can have all my my videos that I want to use in class on the wiki already. Once I create the wiki, it's sort of done. So, you know, you don't have to, if you're thinking of doing a wiki, you don't have to do it all, like photos and all that stuff. It's just, what can I say, it's who I am. I do it. I, it makes me want to go to the wiki if it's attractive, so I sort of think it might help to make the students go to the wiki as well. Um, and I should also mention that this class is not a pronunciation class, although we do some work with that, but it's really a um, class to get them used to academic level vocabulary, listening, speaking, taking notes from lectures, uh, giving presentations, and partaking in, in class discussions, which as you all know can be really hard to get students to do. Um, so in using technology, I'm trying to meet them on their own turf as well. I mean, we all know about that. Um, so this is my theme for this fall. This is my spring kind of theme is the food. And um, I want to show you a couple of reasons I like the wiki. Um, one thing is that students can, I always have a sort of interesting links page or everybody's links. So I, wikis are just great for embedding videos. Oh, why is this, you know what, I have it at the wrong resolution, so I'm gonna have to reduce it all. But embedding videos, so they've been doing presentations and then I invite them to set, put, put a video on there that relates to their presentation afterwards so students can learn, learn more about it. Uh, about their topic. Um, as I said, I can get this set up and it's there. So I have my in-class video and audio and I have all my links and it's just so easy to go into class and everything is just there, you know, and if I want to show the front line, you know, there it is. So it's really nice. We, we do use front line for some things, so. Um, and what else? Um, I have a weekly assignments page. And so everything's there, everything's linked. They get their assignment. They, they do listening at home, so they've got the links to the videos. They do the, the listening. They have the assignment that I've given them um, what to do with that listening. Um, one of the things, yeah, I think I'll skip. There, I'm going to skip some things. Um, another thing that's nice about wikis is you can put an RSS feed so that, for example, I have to listen to, I have to do summarize three 60 second earths. It's a really quick little science report from Science Magazine, I think, isn't it? Um, so they're right there and they, uh, they get updated every time this page loads, so they're current. And they're really great. So that's one of their assignments. Um, and I give them presentations to do. In this class, one of the presentations that they do, they have a choice of doing an environmental news story, and I give them sources to good environmental news sources. Um, but most of them choose to do this, which is um, 
choosing a story from Living on Earth, which is an environmental radio show that's produced right in Somerville, and it's on at like six in the morning on GBH or BUR, or you can find it on the internet. So I put links to the stories on here. They have to choose a story, and then they, I put their name by it so they know that story is taken, so they get to choose. And they have to then um, go to the story and listen to it several times and summarize what it's about. And I've had you know, students actually pick GMO trees, which always kind of surprises me. And summarize the story and do presentation. And they can also read the text. And I tell them, listen to it a couple times and then read the text. And then they do in-class presentations and I record them and put them onto the wiki so that they then have the homework assignment of listening to themselves present and assessing what they what was a strength, what was a weakness, what will they do better next time, what words do they think they may have mispronounced, or and that sort of thing, so they can listen. Um, and they, you know, they, good sound quality always is put that mic if you're going to do this. So. Uh, in the last few class, we talking about the pollution, global warming, all this stuff, and then we also get just in my class for that. Okay. Um, and another thing that I've done this semester, it's a little new, is I have this page I call "Talk to Yourself." Let's see if it works here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we all, I, know, we all I have a link to a learner's dictionary in which they can put in a word very quickly and, and hear the pronunciation. It's really good pronunciation of the word and then listen to it over and over. So I tell them if you're key terms, you have to know how to pronounce key terms. You know, other words, okay, I'll accept you have to learn how to pronounce. So they go to the dictionary, they learn it, and then they can go to this and if it works, looks like it might be, then it records them. And then they can, and it's not working here. So sometimes it's blocked at UMass, but it works. It works in our classroom, and it works at, usually for them at home. But they'll hear themselves. And every time this page reloads, it's whatever they recorded is gone. Every time they re-record, it's gone. So it does, it's not saving anything, so it's completely private for them to practice at home. And some of them actually did use it, so that was nice. Um, what else? So all of these are basically um, listening and then of course the presentation. But a couple of years ago I started thinking I, I really wanted them to do more speaking and the same problem with, you know, that was mentioned earlier is not all students speak in class, so how can you get them to speak? And so I discovered this thing called voice thread and now the school actually has an account and people can get Looked into the UMass VoiceThread account. Um, so VoiceThread is a way for students to to participate in a conversation, or at least give comments to something um, outside of class, anytime at home from home. And I would give you show you some examples. Usually, I make the VoiceThread, so I'll show you some of those. I make them. I use images or short videos and usually ask them a question. So here's one that I did this semester. Play with the volume. What do you think is the message the person who created this image wanted to convey? Also, think about the story of stuff. What connection can you make between what you learned from that video and this image? So I put that well, out there. Well, from the picture I can see here, uh, this I want in here. Um, the picture tried to quote it about how the company like. Okay, I'm gonna just choose a few to play for you. Um. I think this image is an ironic image with a big problem in the world. One side is a hard technology and one side is cheap labor. Hard technology will do everything to get their money as fast as they can. They don't care. Why is another side? High technology will go with pollution and the poor and cheap labor will get those bad things. They don't have the way to choose because they are too poor, so they have to work without thinking it's a good or bad to the health and society. Um, do I have a volume control here other than my computer? Uh, 
might be one of the other. Is that? Oh, is right. oh, yes. This is, oh, beautiful. Okay, I may need this. <coughs> um, the one bad thing about VoiceThread is it's sometimes students don't record themselves loudly enough. So there's a lot of you know, unevenness. But this student was a really interesting comment, and I just wanted to play it for you. If you can hear it, we'll see. A singer is a you, not only for iPod, but also for the poor people. Uh, when the people occupy the Wall Street, besides they are the 99% of the American. Um, but compared with the people in underdeveloping country and the whole world, they still are the 1%. Gap of the world become more huge today. Well, he, well, he says the gap. I think he means the gap between rich and poor becomes more huge today. And that was such an interesting observation that he made, you know. And because we had mentioned Occupy and that sort of thing in class. Um, so these are my, I create these. I make great use of Adbusters magazine for my images because they're so and you know, it's it's what we do with these is I bring this into class. The students are given the homework of do this over the weekend, comment on this. I bring it into class, and it's a vehicle for both extending conversation, extending the discussion on a topic. Because I say, well, what do you guys think of that? You know, we play. I play this in class, and when I play this in class, the students are listening, like really listening. It's just beautiful to watch them listen because it's their own voices and their each other's voices. And um, so we it's a vehicle for further discussion, but also some um, pronunciation and grammar work as well. We <coughs> can hear the errors in other people's or, or their own when we play it. So it's really great for that. Um, and they're always very respectful towards each other, which I really always appreciate. I'll show you another one or two of these. This is one we did recently um, grows up happier. Yeah, uh, the image in the right side where the children live in the countryside was poor environment that they are enjoying the way where they live now. Even without technology products, no internet, but the children still play hard and Build up a good relationship and a good friendship with each other, and enjoying the. Uh, and then, so. These two pictures show us some different lives. The left one are some rich person's house. The right one are some poor children that play water. In ordinary minds, the rich man will be more happiness than the poor children. But from this we can see the poor children, though they are poor, they have a happiness life. They can play together. They have no limit to play something. Okay, so you get the idea. Now sometimes they respond to each other and say, I agree with this person, I don't agree with that. I'd love to find a way to encourage that more. I encourage it, but it doesn't happen, which is too bad. Um, and you can also put video on here. Here's a Everything's so obsolete, it's hard to get attached to like one specific product. But I don't know, it's just like obsolete, just like like uh your little cell phone might be cool right now, but like two weeks it's obsolete because so and so has a new one. Like Danica, she like blow in, and then she's like, "Oh, look at my new phone." I was like, "Yeah, that's obsolete, though." She's like, "No, it's not. I just got it." I was like, "Yeah, Danica, but it's obsolete because you just got it." So everything's obsolete. So. <laughs> so I, I asked them if they agree with Trevis on whether things become obsolete and why they think they become obsolete. So. I was well, agree what she say, uh, but I think that wait till you. Um, a little bit um, extremely, you cannot just guide and then become absolute. But um, I think the message he tried to bring up is like 
now in our society, the, the technology is upgrade very fast. So the thing we got maybe after two years. So you get the idea. Um, and then sometimes I take them into the computer lab and I have them actually create their own voice threads and then have them comment on those. So I did that. Let's see, I'll find. So for each semester, you can have a separate group, and your students become that, that semester's group. So I'm going to play this one for you. Some of my colleagues here have seen this before, but it's really great. I should just tell you what she says, because it's a little hard here. The picture of, this, of the um, wedding cake, and I had asked them to find quotes about food. This is the food semester. And she found a quote from James Thurber saying, um, wedding cake is the most dangerous food. So she asked if you agree and what you think. And why, why did you say that? So, um, please. American writer James Thurber said, the most dangerous food is wedding cake. How do you think the meaning of this sentence? And do you like it? I think he said, Dangerous is means put on weight because some people are very put on weight and afraid getting fat. Okay, and then the next student. I don't agree with what Lauren said. I think the wedding cake is kind of metaphor. On your wedding day, when you and your fiance cut the wedding cake and serve to everybody, you lose your freedom. You have to pay for your wife. You also have to pay responsibility to your children. You have to make sure your family running well. I think that is what the code means. That's awesome. And then I agree with oh, that. <laughs> because the wedding cake is a represent of marriage. I think for the man who shouldn't marry to a woman because he, because after getting married you have to take not responsibility. Okay, and then he goes on. Yeah. And then, and then we get to Ong who said. Uh, I agree with the ideas of the most dangerous food is a wedding cake uh, from the view of the Leo. Point of view of Leo. Uh, I think the, the wedding cake is dangerous for the man because <laughs> Okay, also for the woman, because we, we, we have to be careful about the uh, one to eat the uh, wedding cake, like it's a matter for getting married. So we have to be care careful. So it came, we came into class, I brought this into class and played it, and what I would ultimately use this for was to point out when teachers ask you what's an assumption, what is the assumption the writers make or something, the assumption that the first few speakers made was that it was about that the quote was about men getting married, and they were the ones who were going to be, you know, <laughs> have all this responsibility on. And then the sports student said, "Well, women too, you know." So it was it was a great it was a really useful little video for that. I mean, uh, voice thread for that purpose, and and also it got some good conversation going in class, some good discussion. So I like VoiceThread because it um, it does create material for class discussion. It um, gives me some grammar and pronunciation material to work with. It's obviously authentic. It's their own. Um, so the little mini lessons. It's asynchronous. It's on the student's time. They can do it whenever they can do it. And it definitely lowers the affective filter. So a lot of students who won't open their mouths in class will do voice threads. Everyone has to do the voice threads. I mean, they're graded and they have to do, they don't, they don't grade them as like, oh, you did a really good job, but they have they have to get credit for having done it as part of the grade. Um, and so everyone does it. And they have told me that they often re-record themselves. When they first start doing voice thread, they will re-record themselves five, six, seven times. And I think that's fine for ESL teachers, not ESL teachers. ESL students to do that. I do it too. 
<laughs> but um, because they have to listen to themselves too. So they record themselves and then they immediately can listen and then they can decide not to keep that comment or they can keep it and then delete it later. Um, so it's really wonderful for that purpose. And most of them get down to where they only do it re-record once or twice, they've told me. So it's, um, they get more comfortable with it. And I also like, of course, that they can respond to each other, which I wish I could figure out how to get them to do more often, because they don't do that enough. But So that's what I use. And I sometimes use it for doing um, surveys. So I did actually do a survey in my class of whether they felt like the voice thread was a useful thing. Would you like to just see a minute, just a little bit of that? Just yeah, that's about the last thing. I know. This is why I asked. Oh, I'm reaching to share my home. I think what chat is too so for me. It can help me improve my speaking and listening skills. When I first I used to use Watcher, I was afraid to say my ideas. Um, I always record three times, four times, sometimes five times. Now I know I don't scare anymore. I just uh, record um, one time. Okay. So she's she's comfortable with it in this way. Using Wi-Chat um, gives me a lot of opportunity to improve my thinking skill and speaking skill. From Wi-Chat, I can share my response on the issue and then I can also align my classmate opinion uh, on the subject matter. So sometimes they read, sometimes they obviously they prepare and read what they wrote, which I discourage, but I understand why they do it. So, you know. Anyway, so I do, are there any questions? So each week on the weekly assignment, I have links to new voice threads that they have to do. And um, I do have a voice thread page on the wiki, but I've quit putting the voice threads there because everyone just goes and they have their own um, My Voice, which is, they, they all have an account, the voice thread, <coughs> which is actually on my account. But when they go to voice thread, they'll see something like this. They'll see all of the classes' voice threads. So I don't need to keep putting them on one, at a, one by one onto the wiki, but when it's an assignment, it's